Thanks for joining me on episode 910 of the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. I'm Kim Avery, author of The Prayer-Powered Entrepreneur, and I challenge you to focus on your calling as a Christian entrepreneur. One way to be inspired to do that is to listen to this, the Inspired Stewardship Podcast with my friend, Scott Mader. Because the truth is, when you start thinking about what is success with my money, what is both my long-term and my short-term goals for my family, for my friends, for my priorities, and for my money, then you begin to be able to balance the short-term and the long-term. Because you can look and you can say, what is this going to get me both in the short-term and the long-term? Welcome and thank you for joining us on the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. If you truly desire to become the person who God wants you to be, then you must learn to use your time, your talent, and your treasures for your true calling. In the Inspired Stewardship Podcast, you will learn to invest in yourself, invest in others, and develop your influence so that you can impact the world. In today's episode about developing your influence through stewarding your treasures, I talk with you about why we often focus too much on short-term things with our money. I also talk about why looking at the longer term is important to real success, and I also share why you can balance things in the short term and in the long term with your money. As we talk about stewarding your treasures, wouldn't it be great if you could support this podcast and do it without costing yourself an extra dime? Turns out you can't. All you have to do is use inspiredstewardship.com slash Amazon when you're ready to make a purchase via Amazon, and a small commission will come back to support the show. If you enjoy the show when you're ready to buy from Amazon, just use inspiredstewardship.com slash Amazon. Money is one of those things that it's always easy to be focused on the short term, on the immediate on what we need today. What do we need to make sure that we're taking care of our needs today? What do we need to do to make sure that we've got enough money in the bank to feed our family? We've got enough money to take care of all of the little things that come up each and every day. Because the truth is there's always something that's coming up. There's always something that it's the next thing we have to worry about, whether it's car repair, whether it's food, whether it's shelter, whatever it is, there's always a need for our money in the short term. But this last few weeks, we've been talking to Roger about retirement. And I loved his analogy of the cake, how we have to layer in doing short-term things, taking care of the immediate, but also paying attention to the longer term, paying attention to what's coming down the road, or else we get run over by things that we don't even see coming. See, the ability to look into the future, the ability to prepare for the future is one of those things that in some ways, is uniquely human. It's our ability to project into the future for good or for bad that often makes a big difference in how we approach things. The truth is that our ability to prepare and think about the future is part of what sets us apart. But it's so easy to get bogged down into the day-to-day and what we need to earn the money today so that we can spend it today so that we don't suffer in the day. But the future is coming no matter what. The future is coming for each of us. And we've got to be prepared for that future. And looking at the long term is part of our key to real success. And notice here when I say success is not defined as having a lot of money. Success is not even defined as just doing okay in retirement. Success here is about being able to achieve the things that you really want to achieve, the things that you say are a measure of success, the things that you say are important for your future. Because only you get to determine what success really is for you. 
No, no one else gets to, to say that. No one else gets to measure whether or not you're successful. We often let other people do it. We let other people define success for us. But the truth is, you need to be able to define success for yourself. You need to be able to determine what is your measure of success with your money. Is it being able to have a lot of money to give? Is it being able to have a big house? Is it being able to just manage to get by? What is success really going to look like for you? Because the truth is, when you start thinking about what is success with my money, what is both my long-term and my short-term goals for my family, for my friends, for my priorities, and for my money, then you begin to be able to balance the short-term and the long-term. Because you can look and you can say, what is this going to get me both in the short-term and the long-term? Is this able to help me get towards my goals? Is this able to help me move towards what I've determined success really is? And if it isn't, then maybe I don't need to do it today. Maybe I should hold off on that. Maybe I should not spend that money on that new item or that new car or on something else. Instead, I need to use it to do something that is longer term, something that, that moves the needle towards where I really want to go. And when you begin to think that way, when you begin to balance the long term and the short term, then all of a sudden things can begin to change a little bit. Then all of a sudden you can begin to say, hey, maybe this isn't just about what I get today, but it's also about what I get in the future. See, the truth is there's a, a degree to which balance in all things creates more success. The truth is that we can't do everything, but we can often do almost anything. We just have to determine what are the right things that we should be doing with our money. That's how we manage to have a life today while still having a life in the future. That's how we manage to help others while still taking care of ourselves and our family. That's how we manage to have a balance that really matters in all that we do. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening to the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. As a subscriber and listener, we challenge you to not just sit back and passively listen, but act on what you've heard and find a way to live your calling. If you like this episode on the stewardship of treasures, you can sign up for our treasures tips by going to inspiredstewardship.com slash treasures or text in the U.S., 44222 Treasures Tips. And we'll send you five weeks of our best tips on stewarding your treasures. Until next time, invest your time, your talent, and your treasures, develop your influence, and impact the world.